How are we doing everyone? My name is Ice Grenade and welcome to lesson 5 of the scripting GSC tutorials. And in this tutorial we are going to look into for loops and how you can use them to make little money rewards around your map. So you'll see here we shoot this, gives us 500 points, we shoot the next one, 500 points, shoot the next one, 500 points, and we shoot the last one, 500 points. And if we back out of here, and we head over to Radiant, you'll see that it's gonna be easy to implement these because all we have to do is paste them around the map. And you can do that by pressing Control Alt left click when you have what you need selected. So we can have as many as we like because of the way we set it up and we can put these wherever we want. And they will work in game. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do this. The first thing is, if you pick a model, so press M, go get your model and pick whatever you like. I'm gonna just do a, let's do a, Bench? Why, <laughs> why not do a bench? Okay, so we've got a park bench here. So same thing as always, press B, and we go to script, and we're gonna make it a script model. You could use a brush. Okay, so we're gonna use a bench for this one. Once you've picked what model you wanna use, what you next wanna do is press B, go to the entity browser, and change it into a brush model, and then the next thing we're going to need to do is create a trigger on it. So this is going to be how it activates. Do you want a, one that's a shootable or one that's a, well, you press F on it to buy it. We did that in one of the last tutorials. So we're going to use a shootable in this tutorial. So we go over here to where it says trigger damage and we're just going to drag the word damage in. You'll see that's put a trigger on the screen. And we're just going to change the axes on the grid view and just line up this damage trigger so that it covers the bench. If a bullet intersects this trigger, it will count as a hit as it triggering this trigger. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to give this trigger a name. So I've called it in, in the case of the code for the, for the gold, I've called these triggers a gold multi-trigger. We go to the next one, it's called a gold multi-trigger. What you'll notice is that the target name is different though. The target name associates to the gold and you'll see that it automatically assigns it a unique one every time that we paste it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. If we go to this trigger and we're gonna give it a target name of bench multi. And so we've given it a target name of bench multi and the next thing to do from here is to link it to the bench. So we need to select the bench. So we selected the bench second. Make sure that you select the trigger first and then you select the bench second. And then we're going to press W on the keyboard. And this actually creates an auto link between the two things. If I move the trigger out of the way, you'll see a red line between them showing that the target of the trigger is the name of the target name for the bench. So there we go, it's got auto 15 there. If I put that trigger back over the bench and we now paste just a few of these around the map. You can paste them where you like, you can rotate them. And once we've got a few in the map like so, we're just gonna save it there and we're gonna go into the scripting. I've opened up the scripts map file here. If you don't know how to do this, you wanna probably jump back a few episodes. And what we're gonna do first is we're going to thread a new function. So I'm gonna do thread bench multi. Call it whatever you like, um, but yeah, we're gonna to refer to it later in, the, we're gonna to refer to it in a second. So we've got thread bench multi. If we go down here, these are the two functions that I've just made for the gold to work and we're just going to copy these if i go down here we're going to do a function called bench multi and that's what we just named it up here at the bottom of the main file if we go back down here we have just started writing this out we're going to then type in the array so this is what we're learning today is how you can have multiple objects scripted using an array and a for each loop so the problem with using this gold and this trigger in the way that it is, if we just, for example, if we just copied and pasted that there, it would break the code because we have a target name of gold and then we look at the other gold and we have a target name of gold. Bear in mind, this is an old tutorial over here with gold. This new tutorial over here it uses a different target name where it's linked dynamically and I'll show you how we're doing that we're using an array. So we come back over here to the original tutorial. I think it's the tutorial two maybe, I'm not too sure. It might be tutorial three. And yeah, having more than one will actually break it because if we go into the code and we go down to where it says pick up gold, we are 
setting the gold variable to get ent and then get ent and we're using a, the get ent function which only wants a single entity and if you and if there are more than one entity out there it will actually stop it the code from running or well it won't it'll stop the code from working so you want to use an array in a lot of cases and that's what we're going to do today so the first thing we want to set up and let's just put a bit of space here so you can see that this is the code that we're working with and i'm going to walk through it the first thing is we are setting up the array okay so all the benches so we're going to create a variable which is the array and we're going to say okay in this array we want to get ent array so this is very similar to the get ent function that we used before except we're adding the word array onto the end and it still takes the same parameters as the get ent function the so first of all the name of the target name that we're given the benches go back here and we go check that this target name for the the trigger here is bench multi so if we go back here we want to give it bench multi and what we just gave it was a target name value so now we've got a variable here or an array variable that contains all of the entities with that name and here we've got four entities one two three four um, they all have the same target name there. You can see that's white when we select all of them. If it's red, it will mean that with all the ones you've selected, it's got something different. So because it's white, you can see they're all called bench multi. So we're going to go back to the code here. Now we want to do something with that. And you might think, oh, great. Well, write it in the same way that we do the get ends. And no, you can't really, because there are the multiple instances of it. So it's the program is going to be like okay well which one are you talking to because there's more than one so it won't work so for this we're going to be using a for each and whenever you're working with a race you're more than likely going to be using a for each loop and it's in the name you know for each basically so for each item in the array um, we want to do something with it so in this case we're going to type in for each um, and then you want to have this in brackets and then we need to set up a brand new variable here and this is you can call it whatever you like we can we just for understanding we're just going to call this bench because it makes sense you know for each bench in the all of the benches so that's what we're saying okay so for each bench in all of the benches and then we want to do something so for each bench in all of the benches we are going to want to one play a sound we want to play an effect and we want to give the player some money and then we want the object to delete uh, and the yeah, other deleting the trigger as well so we want that to happen for each bench but the problem with just writing it in here we could we could just write that code in here which is to wait for the trigger so that bench there is basically this bench is the the trigger one so it's gone to one of the triggers and it's gone to the first one and it's gonna do wait till and then trigger player and okay so now it's gone to the first one in the array and it's gonna now wait until it triggers well we don't want that to happen because the problem with doing it like that is okay well if this is the first bench it goes to and you shoot this one it's not going to do anything because it's waiting for you to shoot this one and for you to have it so that you can shoot any one first you need to set it up in its own function so that they can run simultaneously because otherwise it's just going to be waiting on the first time it runs this loop so we need to create a new function so that it can run independently so this is what we're we're going to call this one give bench gold and so what we need to do now is now basically make it pass the object we're working with so the trigger um in this case that one one bench that it's working with we, okay we want to throw that to a new function so that it can then wait for that and then we can go to the next bench and create uh, another wait for that so it's got all of the benches waiting to be shot basically let's just start typing that in 
So to basically to pass this bench into the function, we're going to call it on the bench object. We're going to call it on the bench trigger itself. So we're going to write bench, and then we're going to thread. So we're going to create an instance of this function below, and we're going to give the name of it give bench goal. So now for each bench in all of the benches, it's going to run a new function. It's going to run a new instance of this function here, give bench gold. And when it runs that function, it's going to pass the bench in question that it's currently on. So this function now is going to be created four times because we've got four benches. And for each of them, we're going to need to do a few things. So the first thing is we want a wait till so that we want to wait for it to be shot. And you're probably thinking, okay, well, we want to write bench wait till, and then we're going to type in the trigger and then, okay, well, that's great. So now it's waiting for the bench. However, this is not how you do it. When you run a, an instance of a function on an object, you don't want to give it the object's name inside the function that you're working with. This is where the word self comes into play. So because we are running a function on this object, when we run this function, we want it to, we need to replace the name bench with the word self, because now we are waiting for this functions itself uh, to trigger because it is a trigger you know this bench is a trigger it's a series of these triggers there's four triggers here we got one two three four and out of those four triggers each one is going to be running a function so this function so far is that trigger and and we're saying okay well we're that trigger um we want to wait for it we want to wait for ourselves to be actioned so now that we've done that, we can then set up the other stuff. You've seen all of these ones in the last tutorial, so I'm just going to copy and paste those. So that is the play effects. So we're playing an effect, and this time we're playing it at the location of the trigger itself. So we're saying on this trigger, so we're using self, and then we're going dot origin. So it's playing on itself. The next thing is we're going to then do self play sound success. So I've created a sound with a sound alias name of success and that's just the coin sounds. You can do whatever you like in one of the previous tutorials. We talk about how you set all of that up and then we're doing players dot score plus equals 500. So we're just adding 500 to the player score. So the next thing we need to do now is to let it know that we want to delete the bench itself. So what we've done with these benches, if we move one of them up, you'll see that the trigger is linked to the bench. But if we look at the bench itself and the target name, it's got a, it's got an automatically written name. So we can't write something static in there because it'll be different for each time. So what we do to set that up is we go, okay, well, when, when you triggered that, I now want to tell you that, okay, we've got a bench involved here. It's not just the trigger. So we're going to say, okay, well, there is a bench. So we're going to get, we're going to just give it a variable name. So we're going to give it target bench. So this is the, the object itself. We could write object as well. You can call it whatever you like is equal to get n. And we're now we're going to fill in the details here. We would usually type in, I don't know, the name of the bench here bench and target name but as you saw it hasn't it hasn't got a static name of bench it's got an automated name so instead of writing in a static name here we need to give it the target of the trigger so we know that the function is running on on the trigger because it's an instance of this function ran on the bench we're going to say okay well we want this triggers whatever it has in its target so now it's going to go okay we'll get the entity that has the target name of whatever's written in this bench's target and it will go okay well if this, if this is the trigger that is currently looping through go, okay well what is the target value 
here. Oh, it's auto 17. So it's going to grab that value and then it's going to automatically write in itself auto 17 in, in the code. Obviously, we don't write that in. We just leave it as self target. And then it's got it. So it knows that this variable is now linked to that bench. So now that we've linked that bench up right at the end, once we've played the effect on it, we played the sound on, on, on the trigger and it's all done. We now want to delete the bench object so we can show that it's gone. So now we just do target bench object and delete and voila, we have done it. So there we go. That's all we need to write for that. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go do a compile and link. You could also do a light as well. It doesn't matter too much. I'm going to do that and we'll go in game and check it out. So there we have it guys. We have implemented everything. And there's a crazy, <laughs> there's a crazy amount of benches, right? So yeah, we can shoot all of these. And you see they're all working. Boom, 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 boom. Going, oh my God, there's too many sounds. Right, it's too loud for me. There's the bench, and there's the bench, and there's the bench, and oh, I'm getting, I'm getting hit. Boom. And let's just press F to make a move. Bring back some of the old tutorials. Move, aha, we got this one as well. The little soundboard from another tutorial. Anyway, so thank you everyone for watching. I hope this helps you guys out. Let me know what you think or if there's a better way of doing this, let me know. But yeah, this is just how to make four reach loops work. Just a little intro into that. Yeah, take it easy everyone. Stay freezy and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Right, see you later. Bye. Let me press F. See the effects playing the effects was playing it gave us a thousand points and it screamed at us so stick around i'm going to show you exactly how you can do this so the first thing in making a sound is either dragging the sound into audacity or making one itself just for testing and to make one here ah! okay that that will do basically you might want to think about fading it in and fading it out